Hello and welcome to episode 14 of the Crossplay Podcast. My name is Nikki James, sitting here alongside the one, the only, the Zach. Hello, everybody. Zach, we are just days away from the release of WWE 2K18. I am still excited. I'm still counting the days. Likewise. Is there anything coming out soon that you're looking forward to? Um, aside from uh, the new Sonic game, um, no, nothing that really comes to mind. Nothing on the immediate horizon. Nothing on the immediate horizon. No, uh, the wrestling game I think is going to be the biggest one this year. Yeah, we got that. We got South Park just around the corner. Uh, yeah, that'll fractured be good, butthole. actually. Yeah, um, I forgot some, that's coming out too. So good stuff. Uh, Shadow of War, which we're gonna dive into in a minute here is uh going to be coming out this tuesday the day that this podcast released so look out for that it seems to be getting pretty favorable reviews uh let's just dive right into it today no more fucking around star wars battlefront 2 beta yep is out it is out and it is in full force we played a little bit of it last night zach what were your early impressions um what you did you play also what did you do um well I, we did uh space battles i got to play as darth maul um, I got to play as a Robotron attacker. Um, <laughs> Robotron attacker. A million it, nerds just cringe. <laughs> um, it was it was so much fun. It's I, I it was it's easy to forget how much you have to shoot the enemy in the in Battlefront. It's a little bullet spongy. That's that's how the first one was too. And so I was expecting something a little more like Battlefield. And yeah. uh, which Battlefield's spongy too, but not not like Battlefront. Nah, yeah, not even close. And and on even when we do play Battlefield, we usually play regular mode, not hardcore. So it's it's a little more spongy. Yeah. Than normal. But what did you think of the? Let's go to the the uh, flight controls. How'd you like the space battles? It the space battles were a lot of fun. The yaw being with the left stick that was a little bit challenging. It took a while to get used to that. But the thrust, as far as how fast you're going on the left stick, that's how it was last game, yeah. from what I and remember. And it's nice, I think. I like that, the thrust being controlled by the stick. Yeah, yeah, same same here. You know, and my knee-jerk reaction is to, like, complain about those controls and say they're bad um, or, or whatever. But really, it's any game where you fly and have to learn new flying mechanics. It's difficult at first. Battlefield, Grand Theft Auto was the same way for me. Uh, Just Cause 3 and Battlefront. Yeah, there there is no easy flight controls. It's you're you're gonna have it's gonna be difficult. There's gonna be a learning curve no matter what. Plus, you're dealing with more dimensions yeah. than just running around on the ground. So it's it's so much more taxing on the brain. So what do you think though? Is it a? It was so much fun. I loved it. I love the fact that you start you you uh, if you die in the space battles, you come out as a squad with up to three other people. And so if you pick something like the bomber. You're going out there with a couple X wings. If you're a Y wing, you know you have a couple X wings with you to defend <laughs> this you. This is making me want to play. Just talking I know, about it. I know. So, we, well, once we, this podcast is over, all right, you guys, that's it for today. Thanks We're for joining go. us. Fuck you all. We're gonna go play Star Wars. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a uh, really fun too. My first hour into it, I thought the gameplay loop was a little repetitive. Um, it's the it felt the same as Battlefront One. Uh, and that was a problem. But then I realized what they want you to do is they want you to earn battle points by playing the objective and getting kills and then use those battle points to then spawn as a big tank or a Wookiee or an officer or something cool. The Millennium Falcon. Yeah, the Falcon <laughs> as Harrison Ford. Where's the Falcon? <laughs> um, fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off. Oh, speaking of fuck off, Jose immediately crashed the Falcon. I and know. when when he had it last night, Jesus Christ! So he lost his special privileges for a few minutes, but <laughs> he actually did really well with the flight controls. He was surprisingly good. Um, but yeah, I like I said, once I realized that that's what they want you to do is get to that point where you're just unlocking heroes with battle points, and then you do so well with that hero that you can now spawn again with battle points as an as a new hero. It's kind of a loop that gets really fun and it's re rewarding. Yeah. Um you really have to PTFO in that game though. And it's it's so easy to get distracted especially in the space battles cuz for one even if you come up on an objective that you're trying to shoot, you end up going at it in a straight line cuz you can't, you know, you you shoot wherever you're direct, you know, in front of your plane. Is where yeah, you where shoot, your nose is pointing. Where your nose is pointing. So you're going to be going in a straight line right at it and going slow to get as many shots in. So 
inevitably someone sneaking up behind you and yeah, shooting you down. Really fun though. Um, it's probably not going to be like a day one purchase for me or even a month one purchase. I might wait for it to be on sale. It, it depends. But I'm not super stoked on it. But it was very fun. I w- I would want to see more of like the single pa- player mode because I love multiplayer online. It, it's it's always fun. The last one was fun for that. Mm-hmm. But the the story mode that it had sucked. Like yeah, Battlefield no One was mode. good. Yeah, it had really no story yeah. mode. And and neither did Battlefield really. Battlefield One, it was different stories, different like scenarios, different characters. Yeah, it, yeah, exactly. It was a campaign mode, so to speak, but it was like it, it was broken off differently. Yeah. Um, not I, one solid story arcing story being told. And it right. seems like Battlefront Two has that. I um, hope so. And you play as the Empire, which is cool. You're the bad guy. That's interesting. Yeah. So go ch- small. check it out. Uh, well, by the time this airs, the beta will be over. So if you checked it out, I'm sure you enjoyed it. If not, the game will be out this November. So um, if you like the first, you'll definitely like the second. They added a lot more content. Uh, so Nazis, how about them? Fuck them. Fuck them. The other day, I think you were there. I was playing Rainbow Six, and this guy was trying to uh, melee a swastika into a wooden wall. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I came up behind him. And I think I just blasted him or something. I you forget. just shot him. It, you let him get close to finishing it, because I mean, it it took about at least like thirty strikes. So wasted it was a, a lot of his time. The dude wasted yeah half the time. So he deserved a team kill anyway. And then I blasted him. That's not, not having that in my game. Yep. Nope. 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 <laughs> not uh, in my America. So speaking of upset Nazis, they are pretty pissed off about Wolfenstein Two. They have a Wolfenstein Two put out a campaign on Twitter with the slogan, Make America Nazi Free Again. And now the neo-Nazi groups are acting as if they're like fucking PETA or some sort of organization <laughs> that matters <clears throat> and trying to like get up in arms about it and be upset and act like it's an issue. Where the fuck are we in America right now where Nazis are feeling like they're slighted and they're signing petitions and shit? Yeah, seriously. And it's like, you guys are supposed to love our country. The You know, people... Usually with that mindset, yeah, or like nationalists, to yeah, an extreme. Na- extreme nationalisms, national nationalist socialists, almost. Mm-hmm. Um, they, you know, the Nazis were our biggest enemy, like of the last century. I mean, it was it. They they could have taken us over, and our country it plays an alternate history, yeah, of our country having lost World War Two and being conquered by the Nazis. Like, mm-hmm. are you suggesting that that's what you would have preferred? Like fuck fucking that. idiots, so stupid. Yeah, so yeah. American. The point of that story is fuck Nazis. They think they think they matter, and they think there's some sort of important group that can get up in arms about something. I just think it's hilarious. Yeah, that. I like Bethesda's reaction to it too. They're like, "Look, we're on the right side of history here. It's you know we have no issue there." Yeah, you want to assemble and protest us for for saying Nazis are bad? Then fucking do it, you idiots. Yeah. Yeah, so moving on down the list here, there's been an updated PSVR hardware announced. Now, this isn't really a big jump. Um, what they're doing is allowing HDR pass-through, which is before if you had an HDR uh, television and a PSVR, you would have to disconnect the whole thing and reconnect it to your TV in order to get HDR. Um, now they're allowing HDR to be passed through the H- the uh, PSVR uh, box, so you can you know do that a little more conveniently. They also added what what was it? Here, let me just read the article from over at the Verge. Vlad Sevolv writes: A year after its launch, Sony is updating the design of the PlayStation VR headset, streamlining things a little bit, and removing the previous imposition of having to disconnect the unit in order to view HDR content on the PS4 console. The new PlayStation VR headset model is distinguishable by the relocation of its headphone jack from the wire hanging from the headset to the back of the unit, making for a cleaner, more integrated design. There's also a thicker connection cable, which a lot of people are happy about that. Um, Thinner connection cable. Yeah, a thinner connection cable to go with the upgraded processor unit that makes HDR pass-through possible with this model. So it's really a small incremental step up. This isn't going to you know blow anyone's socks off. It's just a... Uh, like a convenience upgrade, you know, not even a new skew, I don't think. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So that's that story. Um, moving on down the list, we are getting pretty close here to Friday the Thirteenth. Um, just a couple days after this podcast goes live, uh, the people over at Gun Media are dropping some pretty dope ass DLC on you Friday the Thirteenth players. You will be getting 
Uh, Jason Part 4, a brand new Jason. You will be getting the Jarvis House map, a new counselor, rain for all the maps, and it's all free coming October, fr Friday, October 13th for the PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. And you're also going to get a double XP weekend to boot. Have you been playing any oh, Friday the 13th? Yeah. I haven't, I haven't played it in a while, actually. I think when they come out with this update, I'm definitely going to... Seems like a good reason to return. Yeah. Oh yeah, I wonder what the weather is gonna gonna do for it. Like, is that gonna make a difference? Are you, is it gonna be harder to hear you? Maybe I, you could swim yeah. and not be heard. Ah, that's something a good point. like that. That's a really good point. Um, that's cool. Yeah, that would be cool if it made it so it's you're harder to hear while swimming. Yeah, but the trade off like that. is that it's also harder to see Jason because it's raining. A lot of raindrops coming down. It might be harder to see him in the map. Oh yeah. Um, uh, it might be harder for Jason to hear. Driving is going to be a pain in the ass. Oh, I'm they sure. should make driving way more slippier, Dude. slipperier because you're driving in mud, yeah, in a Pinto or whatever it is, you know. So, so you'll want to save the gas and keys for the boat. <laughs> Very smart. That's cool. You just blew that whole, whole thing wide open, dude. Oh yeah! Wow, nice Conspiracy imagination. Theory. So I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to it. I'm gonna definitely be playing it. Middle Earth: Shadow of War is actually getting pretty damn good reviews after being lambasted by gamers and the media alike for their microtransactions and their uh pay to win mentality uh moving over to metacritic it's got an 86 right now out of 100 based on 29 reviews wowzers yeah wowzers indeed that's pretty good <laughs> uh, you know but it is a triple a game so it's gonna get a lot of favorable reviews they always do because they always push the ba the boundaries they always have the big budget they always look pretty so, of course, it's going to naturally get that bump. Uh, but, however, as the entire development process of Shadow of War has been so far, it is not without its controversies. Over on NeoGAF, people are reporting that in order to see the true ending, the final cutscene of the game, you have to complete like this, this mode where you kill every single lead orc or yurik, whatever they're called. What are they called? Uh, there's orcs and there's the Yurikai, which in a Yurikai is a breed created by um, Saruman. And they look kind of orcish, right? They're orcish, but they're daywalkers, you can call them, because they can go in the sunlight. Okay. <clears throat> they're like gingers with fre with no freckles. Oh, so they're the gingers <clears throat> of the... Yeah, they're half man and half orc. So you so have to kill all the lead gingers. And if you don't, you'll never get to see the true ending, the true uh, you know cutscene that ends the game. So the problem there is that there's only two ways to do that. You can either grind the fuck out of the game and spend countless hours. They, they're saying it would take so long. Like to do 20 this. plus 40? Like the only people that are going to do it are completionists. No one in their right mind is going to really do it. Um, I haven't heard hours, time frames. But are they you said, suggesting completionists aren't in their right minds? No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> they take the fun out of all video games. I would never want to live with one. I'd be afraid to wake up in the middle of the night. They'd be standing over me. <laughs> so, yeah, something's wrong with you if you can't just beat a game and move on. Anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> so any, all right. anyway, what was I saying? I'm all worried about um, completion. It's about, coming after me. Yeah, the only way to beat it is oh, okay, yeah. completion. So to, to grind like crazy, or you can pay money out of your pocket to, to see, the, see the real ending. Ooh. So, again, it's another... Or you can go on to YouTube.com a and week just after the watch release. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I don't know if they considered that one. Those fuckers. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, yeah. Uh, moving on down the list. And I'm just going to touch on this really quick because we did talk about this last week in our uh, big hype games coming out towards the end of the year section. We talked a little bit about Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. Yeah, um, yeah. Bowser's plus Bowser's Minions. That game has been released. It's actually got a pretty solid score. Uh, eight out of ten from Polygon. So that's not the only place giving it good reviews. That's just the only one I looked up. So if you do happen to be the type of fella that has a Nintendo 3DS, you can pick that up at your local retailer and get yourself in on some of this sweet ass Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga action. Did you ever play any of those games? I ne I never did. No, I I wasn't much of a DS person. I I had a um, or a Game Boy. Even I had a Game Boy Pocket, and then I have a Game Boy Advance or a Game Boy DS now. But I never got the 3DS. I was never into it. It just sort of hurt my eyes. Really? Yeah. So I'm not really 
not really looking too forward for, to this game. I know they were good. I I don't doubt that, but just never was exposed to them. So that's the news for today. Let's get right in to some topics. Are you down? Down. Are you afraid? Yep. <laughs> yep, but I'm still going to do it. <laughs> You know, Zach, spooky Halloween time is almost upon us. I'm scared. I'm afraid also. <laughs> speaking of, <laughs> speaking of uh, spookiness and spooky situations, so say you are in a like Home Depot or a Lowe's or a big box in pr- home improvement store, right? Okay. Big box. If you can survive the night, you get, we'll call it $100 million. Okay. Okay. The challenge is you're stuck in this store all night with Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, and Chucky the little spoopster, little doll, okay, from Child's Chucky. Play. Okay. So h- how do you survive the night? At at right at sundown, steel doors come and close and co- and close every exit. There's no way out at all for you. So don't even try. Okay. You can hide, you can fight, you can run, you can do whatever. There's no roof access. Um, how do no you, exit at all? No exit, basically. Okay. So I've thought of this for years. I used to work at a home improvement, and I would just daydream and think about this because I was bored as hell. We yeah. No shit. I didn't last very long there. So, how would you survive the night? Spoops. Ready, well, set, spoop. All right. First thing I would do, I'd I'm find. Excited. I'm I so know, excited to hear this topic. All right, go. go. I'd find their uh, Big Joe or or their forklift. Do you know what a Big Joe is? No. It's a lift. We had one at Best Buy when I worked at Best Buy. It's a big lift, like a forklift, only it lifts a platform. So it's the same as a forklift, but with a platform instead of forks. So it's you don't a, use a scissor lift, right? Um, but not a scissor lift, though. Like where the bottom underneath the platform is a scissor. Yeah, not one of those. Okay. It's one where actually it goes down to the ground because you could load big boxes on it and it's got a steel diamond cut floor. Cool. Okay, it's no, big I've never and you, seen put, those. you chain yourself in. It's really cool. Well, hopefully they would have one of those. I imagine a Home Depot or Lowe's would. If not, I would just get on a forklift. Um, <clears throat> oh, no, it'd have to be Big Joe. Because what I would do, I'd get on it, ride to find their fuel, their gas, get lots of that. I'd go to their um, carpentry section. Get a nail gun and get a fucking shitload of nails. <laughs> Ammunition. Ammunition. Put it on Big Joe. Go up to a uh, to the tallest stack. You know how they have all the big, you know, the tall where aisles. they're super tall aisles. Yeah. yeah. Go up to the very top of one on Big Joe. Unload my, all my equipment. Knock over Big Joe and just sit up there and wait for them to come because they're gonna have to climb. There's no way. You know, there's gonna be no other way up there. There's no stairs or anything like that. They'll have to figure out a way to climb. And I'll just be up there. Pop, pop, so you're pop. up there on Big Joe. You're so a, so after you you don't you don't sit on Big Joe the whole no, time, right? You no, I get shelf. off of Big Joe and onto the metal shelf, okay. and I have gasoline there to 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 drop on them and light them on fire. So Jason walks over. Michael is still looking for you. He's lost. Uh, yeah. Chucky's checking the bathrooms, but Jason finds you. Chucky's fuck, dude. I'd be I would be trapped in a. You know, of uh, just a room with I'd be nothing in it. I'd be trapped in an with, octagon with Chucky. Uh, yeah, I'd be trapped. Yeah, <laughs> fuck you, Chucky. You are not a threat. <laughs> but uh, Jason and Michael Myers, those are two big motherfuckers. Yeah. You, well, you got to also <laughs> account for Chucky's agility and speed. He could probably scurry maybe up one of those things. Yeah, and I'd, I'm waiting for you. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Come on. So let's go. So Jason finds you. He looks. He sees you up there. What what's gonna stop him from just bringing the the big fat Joe back down and then getting on it? Um, How do you prevent? Is that possible? Oh, I was gonna knock over Big Joe. Is that a thing? Can you do that? Yeah, it'd probably take a lot of strength though. I might mm-hmm. need some assistance. Hmm. I'm trying to think how how you know what? I'll just light it on fire, Big Joe. I'll just pour gasoline on down onto the the cab you know the cab of it that you yeah. drive drop it all on down, down there and just light that on fire drop a match <laughs> you know what you could do in on the platform are there controls to go up yeah as up well as in the you know driver's yep. cabinet whatever at the bottom yep so what you should do is 
when you get up to the top, take a sledgehammer or something really heavy with you and destroy the controls. So even if they do bring ah. it down, they can't bring it back up. Yeah. Good point. Okay, yeah. that's what I would nice. do. Nice. All right. So you're just going to sit there for nine or so hours and just... Yeah, I might I might try to bring something up there to shield me. Maybe one of those tool sheds they have in the, <laughs> one of in the garden section. Sheds. Yeah, <laughs> like the little metal ones. You build a wall of palm trees <laughs> from the garden section. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right. No, that's good. That's yeah. actually really good. It's kind of similar to, to what I would do. What I, what I would do is go to the garden section. That's an important part of this because there's only two entrances to that usually. And they're okay. from one side. So you can't get attacked from like half your angles, you know. You'll see them coming. Yeah. Okay. And same thing. Get get some sort of way, a forklift or whatever. Find a way to get on top. I'd bring, you know, an axe, machete, a chainsaw. That's important. Some chainsaws. Any power tool that'll, you know, fuck shit up when these guys get up there. Yeah. Chainsaws. You know? Because they will eventually, I think, get up there. Um, yeah. I don't put it. Uh, Chucky will definitely get up there, probably repeatedly. Um, uh, one chainsaw. I mean, you're gonna cut him in half. Chucky, yeah. he's just fabric. You know what <laughs> would be cool? What I would like to do is set up a cinder block at the top of the shelf with me, with a rope tied around it, like twine. Throw that over the rafters, right, and leave the cinder block on top with me. Tie a little like like a like a loop, you know, into the rope. Uh -huh. And when Chucky comes up. I'd scrap with them. We'd fight, right? Fight him over to that rope, tie the rope around his ankle, throw the cinder block off so he's just stuck hanging uh, from the rafters all night from his ankle, and he can't do shit. Nice. That would actually be a cool That'd be a cool way to get rid of Chucky because you're right. Chucky's not as dangerous, but he is tenacious, and yeah. he'll probably just keep coming unless you find a way to completely you take know him what, out of the equation. You know what I'd be worried about now thinking back on my, my strategy? Huh. Chucky would probably just go to another uh, shelf that's on the same level, bring his own nail gun, and try to cat me from oh. there. You know, that's how Chucky... Chucky wouldn't want to get up and... You he and wouldn't like, want to mix it up with yeah. us. He would want to uh, kid a, kill us from a distance. Yeah, and there's also a lot of like small tools and knives that are exist in the store like that that he could equip. You yeah, know. I still think anything where he's in arm's length or foot's length of me, even if he's got a weapon... He has he's no chance. I got no chance. He's too you small. You have this look in your eye right now. Like, I wish you would, Chucky. I do. I wish you would. I, I do. You're getting me fired up. <laughs> so what do you do then? How um, do you combat him busting you with a nail gun? Uh, have to find shelter and then, you know, find a, bu a big box to hide behind. I would and probably, then just yeah, go. Take, some, take some sort of portable shield up there with you. Maybe a wall from a shed. Yeah. Something that you could just hold and, like... Fend him off, you know, easily. Yeah. Hold it with one and then just shoot him with your other. Yeah. With the nail gun. Rainbow Six style. <laughs> Do it like Blitz. Yeah. Yep. It's a way pop, 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 pop. well trained in that. So I would be, like I said, I would I would uh, disable Chucky that way. And then as far as Michael and Jason go, it's really just a matter of fending them off all night. You know what I mean? Cat and, and mouse. Just cat and mouse all night. Yeah. I would even, you know what I could also do is go to the lumber sections. We'll assume we have some time to prepare before this whole thing kicks off, right? You know, before the doors lock. Yeah, we better, because otherwise... We're we're boned, yeah. Uh, so I would take some long planks up there with me, and then I would make these bridges across the aisles. So if they do get up, I can run across, ditch the bridge, and Escape it's like, come at me, bro. And like, now yeah. I'm on a different aisle. You got to climb all the way back down and come all the way back up. And by then, I'm going to have some other work some other escape route planned yeah so i think i would definitely survive the night and get myself a hundred million dollars would you be scared would it be like a, a scary thing for you or would you just uh, be determined? i mean it would be a life or death situation so you'd have that adrenaline so there'd be adrenaline but i wouldn't cower uh you know in that in that situation it'd be figure it out to live you know yeah yeah live or die live so or die we're both survivors we know that we we're gonna get that hundred million dollars. So let's move on to a spoopier topic. Oh no. When you grew up, everyone where they grew up, everyone has that haunted house that exists. You know, the spooky hell house. Did you have one? What was yours? Um, yeah, cause, you know, I moved around a lot as a kid for the most part. Um 
there was a when we lived in Madison Heights, Virginia. This is a old old town, very very small, extremely rural. Um, right across the James River, it's on si- situated on the James River across from Lynchburg, Virginia. Nice. Um, so where I lived, it was a little bit closer to the river, close to the river, and it was um, a lot of old old homes. And uh, the street behind us, called Lynch's Ferry Lane, had this old house that was a two story, um, very dilapidated. And it was always dark inside. Even if it was bright and sunny, you'd go inside and it was just had this darkness inside of there. It was so frightening. So it was a two-story house? It was a two-story house and you could go upstairs and there'd be holes in the floor and shit like that. It was wow. all old, all wood. Um, and there's shit spray painted everywhere. Like a lot of people went and spray painted painted it. Um I'm sure there was. I'm sure it was mostly a like a homeless person hangout or something like that. Yeah, but when you're a kid, when you're a kid, it's fucking frightening. Yeah, and, this is uh, a ghost house. It is a ghost house for sure, and you hear shit in there too. Um, me, Maggie, my sister Maggie, and our friend Shane uh, explored it once, and we heard a bang, a large bang, a loud bang, and all three of us at the same time just bolted. We all <laughs> ran, just out. ran away. But it was, uh, you know, it was one of those places where you walk by, and if you're with your friends, you kind of dare them to. Yeah, I, I know all about. Dare that. you to go check it out. Stay the night in there. Yeah, or, or a double dog down. dare you. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, go on. Well, that was pretty much it. That was like the scariest so, house. How I many remember. times did you guys go in there? Uh, maybe two or three times. The last time when we heard the the bang, that was the the last time we went in there. Never did since. I'm not trying to die today. Yeah. <laughs> Not today. So mine is pretty cool too. It's it, okay. So I grew up in like a poorer side of town on like a dead end street. Um, and at the end of our dead end street was this haunted house. It, it, it was your typical haunted looking house. It had a big front yard, two stories, a uh, very, like you said, dilapidated and just, just destroyed. The paint was all chipped off. There's boards over the windows and for a long time, when I first moved to this house, like in 1995, I think, I didn't, I assume no one lived there. But one day, I forget how, I found out somebody lived there. And, the, and it, her name was Lydia. It was an old lady who lived alone. And my, I somehow got hooked up. Like my dad told me to go over there and like she'll give me some money to go get her some groceries at the corner store. And then when I come back, she'll give me like 10 bucks, you know, as like a treat for getting her as a payment for getting her awesome. groceries. So it was a cool like little deal I worked out with this lady that lived in this truly haunted looking house. Um, so this went on for about, I don't know, eight months, nine months. And one day I go over there and what I would always do is walk under her bedroom window, which was on the second floor. And I'd yell up and go, Lydia. And I'd wait. Sometimes I'd hear nothing. So I'd go, Lydia. And then she'd go, ah. I'm like, do you need food from the store today? And she'd be like, ah, yeah, hold on. And then I'd go sit on her porch and wait forever, like 25, <laughs> 30 minutes for this lady to get from her uh, upstairs to the outside to the porch. And as you can hear her coming down the stairs, you just hear the kicking of like aluminum cans and like trash. You know what I mean? Oh, fuck. And she was like this older, bigger Mexican lady. And she came out wearing this big muumu. And she was very nice, though. Really sweet lady. And she talked to me for a minute and tell me what she wanted. And then I'd go to the store, get it for her come back you know so that was that was the deal one day i go over there and i go lydia no answer lydia no answer so i go home come back the next day repeat no answer come back the next day repeat no answer come back the next day repeat i'm noticing their mail's building up newspapers are building up and i'm like huh something's a little off here right so i go to my dad and i tell him you know everything i just told you and he was like I'm going to call the cops, you know, and he calls the cops and Lydia died. Wow. Um, she slept on a pile of trash upstairs um, and she, she died alone, you know. So, Damn. So that, you know, lent a lot of credence to the whole this house was haunted thing that the kids in the neighborhood, you know, yeah. thought up. If it's not, it is now. Yeah. Yeah. So one day we decided, you know, it's time to bust in there. Let's go check it out. Oh, shit. So we forget how we came in through like a rear window or something first thing you notice is the whole house is flooded with water for about uh, two inches like on the ground floor 
No power, of course. Every window boarded up or something. Wow. Only light you get is light coming in through the cracks between boards in the window. Um, so it was me, my buddy Victor, and my buddy Hector. These a uh, couple Mexican kids I lived with that not lived with, but lived on my block that lived directly across the street from Lydia. So we all three went in there. <laughs> and I remember Hector, the younger brother, brought his rosary. <laughs> and was, and this'll help me. <laughs> this'll do it. Come at me, Lydia. Um uh, so yeah, and we were walking through the bottom floor of this house. When we were walking up to the second floor, one of the floorboards broke and Victor almost fell through. Oh shit. And it free and we had to pull him out. And when we pulled him out, we walked to the very top of the stairs and Hector stepped on a nail that went straight through his foot. Like Oh dude. Yeah, it was almost sticking out of his shoe. I've done that before. That fucking hurt. I can't even I don't even want to think about it. Oh, oh god, that's horrible. God. He I hope he had his tetanus shot. Well, if he didn't, he got one. Uh, So we got upstairs and we found the pile of trash she slept on. And I think for everyone else, it was really scary. For me, it was a little more somber because I knew her. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, they, and you know, as kids do, we freaked ourselves out and ran away, spooked out. Yeah. But that was like, it was cool because it was a very quintessential haunted house. Like, there's no mistaking it. Yeah. You know, Uh, so that was my haunted house story. Stay tuned, guys. Every week until Halloween, we're going to be pumping out some sweet Halloween topics. Going to spook your pants off. If you have any haunted houses that you grew up around, let us know in the comments section. Yeah, let us know in the comments or let us know over on Twitter at Crossplay Pod. Sweet topic, Zach. Thank you. All right. We'll see you in the next topic. It's time for our fifth installment of the Forgotten Game of the Week. Your boy, Nikki James, has the duties today, and today we are talking about one of the best and the most underrated party game I have ever played, and that is Fusion Frenzy. Whoop, whoop. This is the funk face your mom will appreciate. Isn't it terrific? Xbox. It is a uh, Xbox launch title, believe it or not, and it is one of the best, if not the best launch titles. Halo, suck it. <laughs> so it was released in uh, November uh, 2001 by Blitz Games. A little bit here about Blitz. They went out of business in 2013. They were a studio out of the UK. They just couldn't keep the doors open, really. No money. So they went defunct in 2013. They made uh, a couple of pretty cool, notable games. Glover, the uh, shitty 3D platformer on the N64. Yep, remember that. Yeah, do you? Yep. Me too, yeah, it was very shitty, but it was still iconic. Uh, they made Epic Mickey 2 for the Wii, uh, which was a pretty awesome follow-up to Epic Damn. Mickey 1. Uh, so that was, probably, that was probably the best game they did, and it was a good game. Uh, so a Fusion Frenzy was published by Microsoft Studios. It was a... Uh, exclusive to the Xbox. You couldn't find it on any PlayStation. So the whole point of this game was it was basically it's Mario Party without the board game aspect. It's just the mini game. So you, what you do is you set yourself up across six different uh, zones, and every zone has a certain amount of mini games that can be selected. And you do four mini games per zone, and whoever's got the most points at the end wins. Yep. Bing, bing bang, boom. Really easy, and it's got a lot of the classic. Um, fun mini games like where you're stuck in a hamster ball and you're all trying to knock each other off this big circular platform and as time goes on the platform is getting smaller and smaller Zach you and I played this game like 10 or 11 years ago we played the shit out of that game yeah yeah and it's I've forgotten about it um, did you forget about it I did forget about it until you you knew the game you couldn't think of the name of it yeah and we we got it yeah it's it was so awesome and it's so fast paced and it didn't require a ton of investment in terms of like no story no nothing like that just pick up and play which is ideal for couch co-op oh yeah and the there was some clunkiness that made it so much fun like in that game where you're in those big balls and you're trying to knock everyone off the platform yeah Man, that was so fun and so frustrating. If you're just slightly off on your angle of trying to bump someone off, you go shooting yeah. off into the to the fire. Yeah, and another really great mini game that was in there was there's four of you, 
and you're running on a disc that's spinning like a big stone disc and there's lasers coming at different heights yeah, at right. different speeds at different intervals and you got to jump over them or roll or duck under jump them or duck. and it goes faster and faster and it's so chaotic playing with friends oh yeah such a good game it's, oh man i love games like that it's so simple just a little timing game yeah it, knowing to jump or duck oh is yeah, it had, um, here's the name, I wrote down the name of some of the areas. You got the Coliseum, which had rolling ball and ice car mini games. Downtown, which had fireworks and music oh, I remember games. the ice one, too. That was fucking hard. What one was that? Because I feel like I remember it, but I can't I quite. just, I think it was like uh, bumper cars, but it was, you were really slippery. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind of like the same thing they had it in Mario Party, too. But it's still, it's an iconic type of game. It's very fun. Um, down in the Outlands, they had Demolition and Tailbone minigames. I don't know what that means. So the last few places, Military Base, the Power Station, and the Waterfront. So uh, it had sold over 680,000 copies and earned over $16 million by 2007. Uh, so it wasn't a complete flop, you know, but... Clearly not. Yeah, that's a lot of dough. Yeah, and it's kind of one of the things that it's the bump of being a launch game. When there's not that many games to play, you're going to sell a lot because, you know, there's not a lot to choose yeah. from. Uh, it got middling to like negative reviews on Metacritic. It was it's, how the fuck is that possible? Well, that's the thing is it sits at a seventy on Metacritic, which isn't too bad. But that I feel like that doesn't reflect the reviews I was seeing. Every other review I was seeing was like three point five out of ten, four out of ten. EGM gave it a three. I think that they were the ones that gave it a three point four out of ten. Electronic Gaming Monthly. However, the big ones like IGN gave it an eight out of ten. So it, it was a very, uh, that's what I'm looking for, Divided. Div divisive game. Like it made, some people rated it eight, some people rated it two. So like, that's why I wanted to like make note of that. I don't feel like the Metacritic exactly uh, mirrors what I think it should. Uh, but you know, that's how Metacritic works. Yeah. Average, <laughs> average the best and the worst. So the game is really easy to find. There, Fusion Frenzy 2, it did have a sequel, which was also a launch title for the Xbox 360. Another great game. Don't pass Fusion Frenzy 2 up either. If you only have a 360, get Fusion Frenzy 2. It's very similar. It's just what you'd expect out of a sequel. It's updated, has more mini games, looks better. We may even do a uh, Forgotten Game of the Week on that one day. It deserves its own. Yeah. Um, we yeah. should definitely do a Let's Play on it if we can get our hands on it. Yeah, we got to find a way to do some Let's Plays on these older games. We will very soon. And it's going to really blow open like what we can do. <laughs> you yes. know what I mean? So it's really awesome. So, guys, Fusion Frenzy. That's Fusion with a Z. Frenzy. Also with a Z. Also with a Z. <laughs> In case you didn't know. Guys, go check it out. That is your Forgotten Game of the Week. Captain Zach has Forgotten Game of the Week next week. Do you have anything in mind? Yeah, next week I'm gonna do a forgotten video game, so be prepared. I if thought you, you were gonna do, do gonna do like p Pachinko or like or like Othello. No, I was gonna do Plinko. <laughs> oh, Plinko! Is but that then the I dropped the thing in it. Plinko is the best. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, speaking of the best, that's my sweet ass in segue. What is your favorite? bromance in movies or film or just anything we've seen a lot of good bromances uh everyone knows about jd and turk and scrub that's one of the legendary ones not my personal favorite but a really good one uh what do you got um i really like the other guys there's so many other bromances out there that i can shout out but my favorite has got to be mark Wahlberg <laughs> and Will love Ferrell. the other guys <laughs> that is so such a good funny movie. together <laughs> And the best bromances are when they're not friends at first, you know, and then they fall for each other because oh. they're so, such bros, you know? Yeah, that's... The that's scene in The Other Guys where Mark Wahlberg comes in and talks shit on him, calling him, like, desk bitch and all this stuff, and he goes, like, he's like, you're a tuna and I'm a lion and I would eat you or some shit like that. Do you remember that that scene? Yeah. And then, Mar and then Will Ferrell ad-libs this entire thing about, like, you would come in the ocean and then we would get the scent of your pride and we will come to where you live to the <laughs> to the side of the lake and we will we will eat you we will make breathing apparatuses out of kelp and maybe we, we won't go for hours maybe 30 45 minutes but we will find a way to take you down <laughs> and he just the funny thing about it is that whole scene is ad-libbed and if you watch it closely you can see Mark Wahlberg trying not to laugh throughout it's really funny that would be that would be the hardest thing to try to not laugh 
get filming something like that. Especially with somebody like Will Ferrell. Where you know he's just trying to get you to laugh. I'm sure he's just trying oh, to fuck yeah. you. Oh, yeah. He's malicious. Up. It's malicious comedy. He's trying to fuck you up hard, dude. Uh, oh, so, we, so you say the other guys? I'd say Why? the other guys. Um, p- partly because of that, they're, they're such opposites. Uh, you know, Mark Wahlberg, the kind of tough guy who mocks people's ballerina dancing by doing it fucking amazingly. <laughs> he did it amazingly. He's like, yeah, queer, or whatever he says. Yeah. He keeps calling them names and shit and then does it amazingly. Yeah. God, I need to watch that movie. And then Will Ferrell uh. and his wife, fucking Eva Mendez. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so insane. Like, he acts like he's too good for it. Yeah. My wife's got a lot of weight and she loves to wield it. <laughs> And she comes out dressed in like this beautiful nightgown and she's all hot. And he's like, honey, can you go change? You come out here dressed like a hobo. I have company <laughs> over. And she's totally placed to it. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Mark Wahlberg's just like, what the fuck? Oh, that's great. Really good choice. I need Now I need to watch that movie. I'm a peacock. You got to let me fly. <laughs> so uh, what's your, what's your uh, favorite romance? I have a couple romance. of the... Probably the... Best one is gonna be Step Brothers. Oh yeah, with Will Ferrell and uh, John C. Riley. I watched up with Will Ferrell. So bromance. He's a bro. He's dude. a romantic comedian. He's a bro. He's a hopeless romantic. <laughs> uh, no, it just it's such a good movie. I watched it twice this week. That's how wow. much I like that movie. Um, it, it's just good on every level. They start out hating each other. Like when they're in bed together the first night in their own separate beds and it's dark and they're ta- like shit talking, whispering to each other. Like he's like, I'm going to sock you in my fucking face when you sleep. <laughs> and he's like, you know, me and my dad decided that we're just going to get rid of you and we're both going to bang your mom. <laughs> <So> like, <laughs> but uh, it, so it's what makes that bromance so good is the the hatred before the bromance is so intense and then they work so well together as a group um that's probably my favorite but uh, i gotta give a shout out to pineapple express thank you i was I, I just was thinking of that as you were talking about bromances and i was like how did i not think that yeah. that is probably my number one yeah. i think i like that more than the other guys yeah that's tough there it's very close to me i oh, definitely like dude. the movie pineapple express more than step Brothers. i'll go on record to say yeah that. it's one of my favorite comedies of ever. all time for me without yeah. question it's such a good movie yeah a couple uh also i have to give more shout outs a couple shout outs to jane son and bob uh, bromance for sure they love each other and another yeah. shout out to Paul Rudd and Jason Siegel and I love you man have you seen that movie no no I swear I haven't seen that so good so good you know what it's about about the slap of the bass the slap of the bass <laughs> that's all I know man we gotta that's watch literally that all I know about that As movie couple of romantic fellows ourselves we gotta watch it together we'll All like right. get some hagen dazs and i like paul rudd he's a he's a good uh romantic comedian as well he's just a guy that can't get any friends yeah and his wife wants him to get friends and so he gets set up on all these mandates that go terrible <laughs> Man, it's so your movie. You all right, it. all right. Let's okay. watch that. Put okay. that on the list. It's going on the list. It is going on the gosh damn list. Zach. Yes, sir. What is the best piece of advice you have ever received? Um, wow, that's such a tough question. Um, <clears throat> off, uh, off the top of my head, uh, one of the best uh, pieces of uh, advice I've got was from uh, uh, a philosophy professor of mine. My first semester up in her college, <clears throat> um, talking about happiness and um, the, if you chase things that m- you think make you happy, you won't ever attain happiness. Um, but if you do what you think is right, if you chase the things that you think is right, then happiness will find you. Huh. So, <clears throat> so if you chase what you think will make you happy, you will not be happy. Right. But if you do what's right, happiness will find you. Right. Damn, that is deep, dude. Yeah. Do you, um, is that something you try to practice or absolutely yeah um because when you do what you think is right also it just it it makes you feel better about yourself and when you're hardest on yourself that's i mean that's 
the fast track to you know sadness and depression and stuff yeah yeah but um you know if you're if you're happy with yourself and the decisions you're making and and what you're working towards um you know you the better you feel about yourself that's cool dude i've yeah. never i don't know if i've ever heard that one from you that's good that's a really good one yeah um mine is and it's mine's not something that i can uh really practice now uh because it's already over but mine is my dad told me to enjoy my childhood okay and he told me that when i was a child and i remember and i'm so glad and i hope this doesn't sound like conceited but i'm so glad that i had the presence of mind to be like i think you're right and i'm gonna do that <laughs> like yeah. I, I believe you that i should um because he gave me you know the old you know it's over fast and you'll never have it again and if you don't you're gonna wish you did so get dirty and you know <laughs> mess up awesome. mess up now and that was the time, you know, and I took that idea and ran with it, much to his chagrin. Uh, <laughs> the whole get in trouble thing. Well, I'm sure he, I'm, you know, that's the advice that a dad gives to a son that he really cares about. That's really solid advice yeah. from a dad. It shows he cares. So I like met one of my childhood best friends, a guy named Colin, and then him and I just ran shit like our entire uh, youth and childhood, teenage years up until we were 18 man there's we could do podcasts on just stories of stuff we've done um we would love to get the cops to chase us uh just by antagonizing them and then try <laughs> to run away from them up through the uh, hills of downtown ventura and we just i don't know it was always something man we we're like we, downtown ventura which is in southern california is a very hilly area a lot of hills a lot of steep hills Colin and I would go up to the top of these hills and lay down on our skateboards and just try to blue down them as fast as we can. And now I'm like, oh, my God, that was so stupid. Like, we went across so many intersections, Main Street, you know, all those streets, and just didn't care. Yeah. And never got hit. Got close once, got really close. But, you know, so my dad told me to enjoy my childhood, and fucking A, did I. Like, I did it to the fullest. I have no regrets about that. Awesome. So that was that's good advice. It's something I hope to be able to pass on to somebody one day. Um, so enjoy your childhood, kids. If you're out there and you're in high school, I know one of our biggest uh, friends, listeners on Twitter, sbxxx. I know you're in high school, dude. Get dirty, make mistakes, go kiss a girl as long as she likes you and it's consensual. <laughs> 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 uh, I'm gonna go move on before I get myself in trouble. Where you end up on a BuzzFeed <laughs> top 10 list. <laughs> yeah. Moving on. Top to 10 most sexist podcasters. It's just my face on the cover. <laughs> Final topic of the day. We are going to let you guys go. Zach, would you rather have your mom as your boss or your boss as your roommate? All right. So, <laughs> that's one so, to bite on. So one thing to... Uh, think about the knee-jerk reaction is my mom was my boss for the first 18 years of my life i do not want that shit to continue yeah especially you if know? she was like a domineering or a mean or a just annoying or yeah demanding <laughs> demanding bossy you know boss yeah likes to tell you what to do yeah she's <laughs> oh, yeah so that would that would suck but it also could depend on your boss because if you had a really shitty boss as a roommate, um, that could be a, potentially a lot worse. You know, imagine if it was someone who was, you know, very against some of the things you like to do. Yeah, yeah. If like, you know, like if, say he was anti video games. Yeah, or you thought they yeah. were fucking the devil. Like your lifestyles are just completely polar opposites. That would be a pain to live with. Because then you have to go back to work. Like what if you, see you just him like, what day. if you like to go to parties? What if you party, go to concerts all the time, stay out late? Yep. And then you can't like call in sick the next day. <laughs> no. So that would suck, but I, I've actually had a boss as a roommate before. My supervisor, really? yeah. My old supervisor, um, Jose. He was uh Peps? Diff yeah, different Peps though, <laughs> different Pepe. Um he was our he was my boss and and a roommate of mine and it was actually awesome because I never really called out. I was a good employee anyway, and so he was cool with uh, drinking and and playing video games all night, and so it was cool. That was uh, good times. Yeah, like so. So you're saying you would rather have your boss as your roommate? I 
yeah, not, uh, as of right now, my current boss, yes. But um, also, you know, I, I could understand if I had a different boss, I wouldn't want it. But in my situation right now, my life situation, I would much rather have a boss as a roommate than my mom as my boss. Yeah, me too, dude. That's kind of where I'm at. Because, again, like you said, the knee-jerk reaction is to be like, I do not want my mom as my boss. Yeah. Um, but in my situation, my boss is actually really cool. He's a great guy. Um, really nice. I've, we've actually talked about, I, I knew my, my current boss before he was my boss. I actually trained him in the job we do and he's a much older guy and he got, he's now my manager. So we're really good friends. Um, so I'd love to live with my boss. You know what I mean? He's a cool guy. Yeah. Um, I do definitely do not want my mom as my boss. That's for fucking sure. <laughs> um, no, no, me and my mom are too much alike. Also, we probably butt heads a lot. And yeah. it's I love my mom to death, but I do not want to be her employee. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I think that's a pretty quick and easy answer for me. Guys, what do you think? Let us know over on Twitter at Crossplay Pod. You can also read the blog over at WordPress.com slash crossplay entertainment. And if you feel like it, you can go over to Patreon and support us over there at patreon.com slash crossplay entertainment. entertainment. Entertainment, guys. Thank you so much for joining us here on Crossplay episode 14. God bless you. God bless you. Y'all come back down here. I've been Nick James. I've been Zach. Y'all come back down here, man. <laughs> <laughs>